Riley J 2A here. Okay, so getting right into it. Obviously, we've been talking a lot about this, uh, you know, Senate negotiation, you know, on a gun control deal, compromise, even though none of this meets the definition of compromise. It's neither here nor there. Um, so, you know, they were they were failing for a while. It, see, it seemed that this might actually die for quite a while, but they managed to rush into action and get something through. So we're going to talk about it. Um, so the bill is Safer Communities Act 2022. That, that's what the bill is going to be called. Um, now, you might be wondering how was this how did this happen so quick and how was this not really talked about too much? You might probably didn't hear too much about it until you did, right? Like it wasn't, it seemed like it was dying, 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 and then boom, there was a bill. Okay, so how they were able to do this was to use the um, strip and insert technique. It's a pretty dirty, pretty backdoor technique. Um. But that's what they did. So basically, they took a bill, which was originally S-2938. This bill has previously passed in the Senate, um, failed in the House, but then recently was reconsidered in the House and passed and has now been stripped of, you know, its original goals and have inserted this Safer Communities Act language. So that's how they were able to get it done so quick and so, you know, low profile with it. Okay, now that's how they're able to get to this point. Now, you might be wondering what's in the bill, so I'm going to talk about that real quick. I'm just going to go down the bullet points. Now, I made a video before last week talking about what you know what what the verbal agreements basically in the senate were for the gun control but nothing was written yet stuff is now written so you know a lot of this is going to be the same stuff but you know this is more definitive now so first you got um funding for mental health and school safety Okay, you know, is assuming that's done right, those could be good, those could be good things potentially. So I mean, nothing real bad to say about that. And I will also say there is a bunch of funding in here. I mean, so much money in this going around in here. So keep that in mind. Um, and there's a bunch of stuff that isn't necessarily relating to firearms that I'm not going to talk about here. I'm more looking for the Second Amendment infringements, which we're going to get to. Okay, so like I said, mental health and school safety funding, no problems there. Um, But then moving on, we've got... Okay, I talked about it in the other video. Enhanced background checks for those 18 to 21 years old. They're basically going to be able to access your juvenile records, among other things. They're going to be able to keep you at a three to ten day, three to ten business day waiting period. Unfortunate. Not great. Okay, that that's that. Um, going down the list. They're basically looking to broaden who needs to be a FFL. Okay, so if you like to purchase a lot of guns, and then maybe you sell those guns later, you know, you've had your time with them, looking for the next best thing, whatever your situation may be, you could be affected by this portion. You might need to, you know, you might need to be an FFL in order to sell your own guns if you're making a profit with some exceptions. So that isn't great. And and there's more aspects to that portion as well. 
hey, that's actually really not great. That That's going to affect a lot of people, I would say. So moving on, the red flag portion. So I talked in my other video about you know, this it was most likely going to be funding for states to enact their own red flags. And yes, that is what we're seeing. States will be, or there will be federal money for states who already have red flags and those who want to enact red flags in the future. This money can also be used for some other things. So, you know, we'll see what ends up being used there. Anyway, moving on, trying to keep this video short. Um, there's a gun trafficking and straw purchasing portion. Those are both already crimes, illegal, can't do either of those. So, you know, we'll see as far as that goes. And then the big, in my opinion, probably the, the worst of this bill, which is the boyfriend loophole. Now, this portion will very widely broaden the, it's going to pull a lot more people basically into the realm of federally prohibited. So it's going to make a whole new class of federally prohibited individuals. That is very bad and unfortunate because this will affect quite a few people, I would say. So that's, that's maybe the worst portion, but of course, none of this is good. You know, all firearm restrictions are infringements. So of course, none of this is good. Um, but that's, that's about it. Those are the bullet points. Um, that, that's how they were able to get to this point. And at this point, we're just going to have to see what happens. You know, this, this, this very light, this is very likely to pass at this point and soon. So it's unfortunate, but this is where we're at. Um, So that, that's really it. I just wanted to get on here and make a quick one, you know, a little update on this situation, but they, they managed to pull something together, unfortunately. So that's going to be it for me. You know, not, in, not an enjoyable one, but I hope you're able to use this information and, uh, you know, goodbye.